Chris? All righty, good evening and welcome to the Monday, May 20th meeting of the City Council of Villa Vista. If you'd please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do the roll call of council. Council Member Wozniak? Here. Lloyd? Here. Flynn? Here. Fowler? Here. Bork? Here. Wilms? Here. All present. Thank you. We'll move into citizen input. And first is Matt uh, Yaki. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Matt Yaki. I reside at 47 South Chestnut Drive and became aware of an ordinance that is in need of remediation on May 9, 2019. Inspector for Community Development Cheyenne Dostart sent a letter noting the specific violation in City Ordinance 201.9, Section 18 through 20 regarding playground equipment in front yards. It occurs to me that this is a byproduct of a previous era of the city when it was primarily a retirement community. Since that time, the demographics of this area have changed significantly and our ordinance should reflect those changes. Cheyenne has made me aware that the specific violation I have committed is now not uncommon. She provided me with four other addresses that have recently been cited for the same violation with no other option for placing their playground equipment. She has also expressed her desire that the ordinance be changed as well. Additionally, my ward's council member, Ms. Linda Lloyd, has had proposed changing this ordin ordinance just one year ago. This was met with scorn by some members of the council and with consideration by others. Those that were opposed seemed of a mind that the majority of the citizens would not approve an amendment to this ordinance. I had the administrator of a local Facebook group living in Bella Vista, a group of almost 10,000 members, create a survey asking those members if they would be in favor or opposed to changing the ordinance and allowing playground equipment, if well kept and proper in working condition, be allowed in the front yards of properties in the city. 88% were in favor and 11% were opposed with a total of almost 500 participants over 72 hours. I'm not asking that the ordinance be entirely repealed. I understand the need to keep our properties presentable and keeping the pristine image of our city, off our city offers as well as the natural beauty and coexisting in the natural environment around us. What I do request is that there be an exception for those households who, know, who have no other option for placing this equipment on their property, that the equipment be a safe distance from any high traffic roadways and be presentable and in a safe working order. In conclusion, due to the changing demographics of our growing city and the needs of its younger families that are representing more and more of the population of this community, change is in order. I ask that you consider my request, reconsider Mrs. Lloyd's request, and the favorable opinion of the 88% survey that agreed this ordinance should be changed. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And Matt, as we discussed, um, I believe that you're going to be working with Ms. Lloyd. Uh, I hope to be. And okay. I can help. There's also one other consideration, and that's the ACC. Right. But we'll cross that bridge when we get that's there. That's the plan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, you're up. I'm Bob Fulkerson. I live at 22 Metfield Drive. I've lived there since 2003. We have completely covered our area, our ground, with where our house is and the next lot which I bought. We covered it all with three inches of rock, brown rock. It's been there since 2003. Now all of a sudden I get written up because my truck is parked on it, on my lot. I can't see why I have to get written up now when I need SB2 Two. gravel, mm -hmm. which is a white gravel. Correct. I have brown gravel. And I don't think it's right. I've been there for 16 years. 
with this truck, two trucks, and the gravel. And nobody's ever said nothing about it. And I don't know why I have to change my gravel under my truck for that reason. It's been there for 16 years. Nothing's ever been said, done, or about it. it everything was fine. I just want to know why I was written up and why I need white gravel. I don't understand it. Are you going to be staying for the entire meeting? I hope so. Okay. Doug, would you have a chat? Uh, the director of CDS is here. I'll ask him to chat with you. Thank you. Uh, could, could I get a quick question? Okay. Uh, do we have that yet? Well, no. But the rule's not in effect yet, so you'd have to. Oh, okay. It's out of order. I just wanted to catch his address. I got met. Oh, I've got it here. I've got it written 22. down here. Okay. I've got it written down. Norma. I'm a little older than the rest of you here, but that's not the only difference between us. I'm not one of you. My family homesteaded in Benton County in the 1800s. In those days, they worked together and they helped one another and they flourished they had many children, they populated it, and it grew. And it's been a wonderful place to live. Bella Vista has been a lovely community, church-loving, neighbor-watching, and done all the good things that people do for one another. And when my husband came home and said that he had asked for the name of the person who had taken a picture of our property and others, he was told he could not have her name. And I don't think that's right. I think if someone, I used to, be on city council, for God's sake. If we had a problem, we went and talked to the people. Isn't that the way we're supposed to be in Bella Vista? Aren't we supposed to be civilized people and caring? We're not supposed to sneak around and take pictures of people's property and turn them into the court. That's ridiculous. It almost makes me ashamed. And I don't want to feel ashamed of this community. I think somebody here, all of you, should feel exactly the same way that I do and put an end to this. If we have a problem we're decent people. We can talk to you. And I thank you so much for allowing me to say this to you. You're very welcome. Thanks, Norma. Okay, Richard and Mary McKinney, um, now you've got an option here because there's going to be an open hearing. Would you rather speak then or would you like to speak on both occasions? Both. Both? And Richard, you're first. Good evening. My name is Richard McKinney. I reside in Fayetteville. I grew up there along with my siblings. We have been in Bella Vista as a family since 1928 and forward with our grandparents. Um, we had requested some years ago um, that the city establish, once it became a city, a historical ordinance or different districts for the existing old structures, summer, summer cabins included, that were seasonal use, so they could be regulated 
from different than a single family ranch style home, which is a totally different creature. So if I can ask a question, has that ever come about? It's not time for questions. You just have to get three minutes. Comments. Okay. So someone will have to answer that for me later. I'm going to take that as a no. When we were approached in a certified letter of violation of ordinance was the first indication we were ever brought into the city. We were not sent a welcome letter. We were not told that we were in the city. And when mother called to ask, the clerk couldn't even tell her. But I'm getting violations of ordinance. Then we had this encounter with a guy named Chris Sunenson. When I talked to Mr. Sunenson, he was a bachelor, landscape design educated. He had never worked as a building inspector. He would never inspected a building. He was undereducated, undereducated and underqualified to be doing that. He had never inspected a cabin of the nature that we have in Bella Vista and there are a number of them still around. So that was a rough approach. And we tried to work through some things that uh, I'll further address when we get down to the item. Okay, Thank you. fair enough. Mary? Hi. Good evening. I'm Mary Jane McKinney, and my mom was Julia Ann McKinney. This is the sixth time I've been out since mom died. Not very good because I went through some profound grief. And my brothers will tell you, I haven't been as helpful to them as I would have liked to have been. So one thing I've been trying to do is find what mom first wanted to talk to the city council about. We have the properties, we, as in my family has been, we have these properties we have Sousa's Drive 9834, 9835, 9836. So we switched a property with a gentleman so he could park his boat. And he has passed away but resides on Sousa's Drive as well. And my membership lot is on the corner, which you have now almost completely graded over. But mom wasn't able to get a council member or the original planner that my brother Rick just mentioned to understand how much information she had for you about historical buildings. Almost all the buildings in a row on Sousa's Drive were researched with great detail in the 80s and placed on the National Register. I've asked for a letter to help us with the tax credit. This is what she was asking for from the very beginning when you annexed her property without her permission. And I am sorry it took us so long to find this. Other parts of my family wanted me to look for other things. I've been trying to dig this up. So I left with Mr. Christie, Mr. Wayne, someone on your committee, the original Arkansas Preservation Strategic Plan that mom was trying to explain to you and all of the tax credits that you have missed out on as a city by not looking at the historical value of the properties. Because my dad got ill and we cared for him for five years. Then mom was not very ambulatory and I was caring with her with help from my brothers. I did not handle her death well and I'm sorry I haven't worked on the property since then but we did clear the middle property when you requested and we're willing to work on Blackwell which I'll let Rick talk about. I would just like for your um, additional time for us later to talk about Paisley and I only call them by those names because that's what they are. They never had an address. They had bearings of latitude and longitude and lots through the POA. It's t their taxes have been paid which I did and mom did and their POA dues of the Hill have been paid. So I appreciate time talking to you later. I do have a letter from the Heritage Office in Little Rock. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Mary. Stan Moore. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I have a question and perhaps a proposal for the council. 
um, in this regards the Arkmo property which is owned by the POA. Mm -hmm. Every map I've seen shows that that land is not in the city limits, correct? That is correct. And has the city in the past made any attempt to annex the Arkansas side of that property? Uh, not since I've been mayor. Not that I'm aware of, no. But, sir, and, this is a three minute period for you to speak. It's not really a QA. I just want to make sure okay, you're aware. Okay, right. But there, there's some things I don't know that would, it would help me. And I assume the city could legally annex that land? It's on three sides? It's bounded in three sides by city limits, mm -hmm. right four sides of the Missouri. Quality. Again, it's not a Q&A period. I could, we, you just need to go ahead and make your statement. Okay, sir. I understand. Well, many of us who live up in that area, I live at 11 McVitie Drive, mm -hmm. north of the Scottsdale Golf Course. Many of us up there are concerned about what might become of that land once the POA sells it. You know, worst case scenarios come to mind, hog farm, chicken houses. Although I worked for Tyson many years, I love chicken, but uh, the houses were a little different thing. Uh, we're concerned about the ultimate use of that land, which is right now quite beautiful. We drive through it every day. And our thought is, if the city were to annex the Arkansas side of that, then at least that portion of it would have some more restrictions of use on it, which might keep it then from being turned into a hog farm or chicken houses or whatever. So I'd just like to ask the, commit, the council to consider annexing that land because this is really a nice part of Bella Vista and we'd like to keep it that way and if the city had that within the city limits, which I assume wouldn't be a great cost to do that, then that land could probably end up being used for something which would be very much acceptable to all the people in that area. So I appreciate your consideration great. on that. Thanks, Mr. Moore. Uh, one other quick question. Yep. Uh, the route from to the east to the west side of Bella Vista, the de facto fastest, easiest route for the north side is Gordon Hollow, Scottsdale, mm -hmm. and on over to Glasgow. And I think from what I see, the speed limits there are 30 miles an hour, rarely mm -hmm. observed. And it's getting to the point where you can pull out from some of our streets, McVitie, Lawrence Kirk, O'Neill, mm -hmm. and you can end up, even though you look both ways religiously, you can end up with your rear view mirror full of somebody doing 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. Is that just a call to the police to get more? He's right there. Okay. Is that just a call to the police to get more uh, patrols through that area? Yes, sir. We appreciate that because uh, there have been some near misses, and I don't want to be on the bad side of that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We'll carry on with the agenda. The next is the approval of council minutes for April 29th. And are there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Council Member Wilms? Uh, I'll abstain. I was not at the meeting. Okay. Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Carried. Five. Thank you. The next are the reports. Kerry sent out the, um, uh, the financials for the quarter end, March 31st, prior to the meeting. Um, as far as I know, she didn't have any questions from you. She is away at a conference this week. She'll be back in the office next Tuesday if you want to speak with her. For those of you who are interested, uh, you can obtain a copy from City Hall if you so desire. We publish them every month. Um, we're doing very well. We're not over the budget at all. In fact, we're under, and we um, still have a very healthy reserve. But if you would like to see it, I encourage you to drop by, and we can run a copy for you. Okay. Uh, the Trafalgar Road fire update. Since our last meeting, of course, the, um, uh, the POA has taken on the uh, challenge of putting the fire out. And so I won't talk to that so much because I really don't know what their plan is or how they're tackling it. But I would like to talk to you about, um, so where do we take all our organic material now that the stump dumps are no longer available? We've been looking at possibly using air curtain technology, which is what they're going to use at the stump dump 
It's a burning technique, but it has air floating over the top that supposedly keeps a lot of the uh, smoke and the particulates down. Um, each unit is about 200,000. We'd need two of them. By the time we figured out, we'd have to hire more employees, put an access road in, um, and have water pumped in. Uh, it very quickly got to a million and a half, and I don't have a million and a half dollars. So the next thing that we're uh, looking at is possibly mulching. And uh, there's a meeting in early June with a gentleman who does a lot of mulching down in the Russellville area. So we'll explore that and see if that's something that we can do. In the meantime, up until June the 1st, you can take your organic uh, waste, uh, wood, etc., over to Bentonville. But after the end of May, they will no longer accept. And so just bear that in mind. But in the meantime, we're still going to forge ahead with the mulching idea and see if that's going to work for us. Okay, we don't have to uh, suspend the rules because there are no ordinances this evening. So we'll carry on with new business. The first is a resolution ordering the raising and removal of dilapidated and unsafe structure owned by Janice Strong Smith at 9384 Suitsus Drive in the city of Bella Vista. So at this point now, we will go into public hearing. And uh, Director Tapp, would you come up and sort of open it up for us, please? And, and this is only on this one property. We'll yep. do this two more times. So this is only a 9384. Mayor, Council, good evening. Uh, new business letter A is a resolution ordering the raising and removal of the structure at 9384 Suits Us Drive. Structure has been vacant for several years and has dilapidated to the point that it's unsafe and uh, unsafe to be around. So city staff is recommending raise and removal. Okay. Now, is there anybody here that would like to participate in the open hearing and speak? I'm sorry? Okay, fair enough. So you can go ahead and close the public hearing. So we'll close the public hearing. And then maybe you'll move on to a debate on the resolution. All right. So any comments by anyone? This is only a 9384. Not a big deal, Larry. Any comments? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, while I understand that it's tough to lose one of these old line barter cabins, um, the city over new, many, many years has made attempts to resolve this situation and it really is dangerous. And I would reluctantly agree with this resolution. Okay. Anyone else? No. Um, the structure I first observed two and a half years ago whenever I was first uh, placed on council. And I've made, I don't know, at least four or five trips up there since. I did make another trip up today, and the structure is deteriorated to a further degree than it was two and a half years ago, and there hasn't been any attempt to make any improvements on the structure at all. And that is absolutely uh, unsafe. You know, it could be a disaster just kind of waiting to happen. So I support the resolution. Anyone else? Mayor, I, I would add also that this is not something that as a city council we're interested in doing. This is the last resort. And uh, we want for all of our property owners to take care of their property. This has been neglected for an extended period of time. And there's no owner here to, to object to this. This is, this is the responsibility, first and foremost, of the owner to take care of this. And because the owner's not taking care of it is the only reason that we're here tonight. So we have no other choice, really. Okay. Uh, we have a very unsafe situation over there, and it needs to be taken care of. Anybody else? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Well, <clears throat> roll call vote. Councilmember Lloyd? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Carry 6 0. Okay, the next resolution ordering the raising and removal of a dilapidated and unfaced, unsafe structure owned by Richard P. McKinney et al. at 9386 Suits Us Drive in the city of Bella Vista. 
We'll now move into open hearing. Doug, do you want to start it off again? Sure. Mayor, if I could just make one statement sure. for the minutes initially. A state law requires in a situation where you have either potential unknown or non-resident owners that the city procure the services of an attorney ad litem to represent that property interest which may exist out there. The city, in fact, did that. The attorney's name is Sol Kim, and uh, I just want that to be on the record. I think Sol is back there. And so uh, just so the record and, and the minutes are clear that that, in fact, did occur. Okay, thank you. Doug? Thank you, Mayor Council. New business letter B, resolution ordering the resident removal of a dilapidated structure at 9386 Suitsis Drive. This structure also has been vacant for many years and has deteriorated, deteriorated to the point that it's unsafe to occupy, unsafe to be around. City staff has uh, tried for years to get the property either rehabbed or removed. And at this time, we're recommending raise and removal of the property. Okay, thank you. Anybody wish to speak? This is on 9386 only. Hi. I'm Mary Jane McKinney. I am the great niece of the Blackwells. I'm not sure of the address, but it was the Blackwell cabin, if that's the one we're speaking about. Mm -hmm. It is this one. Yeah. It's in your presentation. It was in 1980s put on the National Register. This is the Paisley County. This is Paisley. Oh, we're on the Paisley, Paisley. now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. This is Paisley. <laughs> it was put on the National Register in the 1980s. Paisley, that's wrong. No, it is the Blackwell Paisley. Okay. This is on 9386. Whatever the name you have on it, it's 9386. I don't know, Mr. Dad. Which one? So it's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's Blackwell. Okay. Excuse me for going over my three minutes if I do. You don't have no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No so um, I believe my brother who is, uh, I'm sorry, one of my brothers is here. Another brother is out of town with his son. And um, I did not know I was on the ownership of this till just a couple of years ago. Um, but I put money in with my brothers to get the... A requested structural engineer. It took me six different structural engineers calling in 2013 after you annexed the property against my mom's wishes. Mr. Gore was chosen because he was the one that knew Cooper and his dad had worked for Cooper and Company and put in all the roads and he was familiar with the cabins. My brothers tried to put time into it but there were multiple multiple permit changes and I still don't know what I paid for, for every permit change, but I wrote every single check to Mr. Gore for the changes. I never got an explanation from Mr. Senison, and he actually told me he would not talk to me. He would only talk to my brothers. So my mom said, if they won't talk to you, then there's nothing we can do just go ahead and pay the bill and hope that maybe sometime they can get up there and work on it. I had to have surgery in 2016, still caring for my mom. We lost my dad in 2013. He was a veteran. And so I went to the VA with him while he was in hospice. And I'm sorry, this was not our priority. But I want to know where my $6,300 worth of permits went to because I don't see, and nor does my brother, when we did every single structural engineer drawing and my brothers took it up, why we couldn't have just put that work into the cabins. And I have been in Branson and looked at exactly, and I have pictures of what we drew up. And there was just a lot of work to be done. And so yes, we need more time. But I think what one of my brothers who wrote in to you suggested is that if we can repurpose the materials, and you'd have to ask my brother Rick, who's in the back, we would be willing to dismantle Blackwell. But those pilings, as you see in the presentation that I gave you, are to support a 2,300-pound car, plus the timber for which these cabins were made from 
on the property. They were built from the timber on those properties, often with the original bark, which Mr. Gore couldn't believe when he went inside the cabins. He has been inside Paisley. He walked into Blackwell. I have been in Paisley and have removed what I could. Other people have stolen things. But until Mr. Tabb told me, we were never told we could have put a fence around either of these properties and we could have met one of your requirements. No one told us that. And so it wouldn't have been as unsafe if we could have put a fence around it. We have not once dug into the mountain. We cleared the middle property, which was Deaton. But if we dismantle Blackwell, you need to tell us what to put on that slope because that has not been rained on, full rain like we've had in all these years. And it was a beautiful cabin and those families spent time there. And these were all women who worked through the war. There were only two men in the family. And we just should have had time. A friend of mine said who has another cavern, she doesn't have to get a permit to put in a septic tank. Why did it take us so much time just to get a couple of permits to try to renovate them? And all they need is that little septic tank when we get to Paisley. But we are willing, if Rick is okay with it, to dismantle Blackwell. Maybe talking to my other brother who's the executor, donating some of it to the museum. But my mom has four exhibits and four donations plus me one that have gone to the museum. And we have done a lot and she worked so hard to get those on the National Register. And if you look at the full map, even though I only gave you certain copies, there are 12 structures. You have lost all but seven on the National Register because when my mom tried to talk to you about preservation and historical overlay, you did not take those tax credits. You've lost them and you've lost five structures. And I'm just trying to, when we get to Paisley, repurpose the material from Blackwell let the other cabins take advantage of it, which I might recommend you do for the one that you're going to tear down. But please don't by mistake tear down ours. You put an eight inch water pipe next to it and really took advantage of its foundation. And that water has been running down next to it until you finally buried the pipe. So Blackwell did not have a fair shake in all this. And that is a family cabin. That's the way we see it. We don't see it as an address. Thank you. Okay, just so the council knows, um, because I don't think, Mary, you were part of this. I met with your two brothers, um, and Mr. Kelly was with me, and so was Mr. Sonnison on site um, in the fall of, of 2015. But I was not there. Okay, that's fine. That's why I'm telling you. And I understand that other people met. They would not talk to me. I just don't appreciate, nor my mom, even though you knew her, you weren't uh, listening to what, well, somebody, I think Mr. Mike does, big old Mike. <laughs> he knew her, I'm sorry. That's what he told me to call him. <laughs> um, my dad was dying, all I can tell you, and my mom was dying. Cabins don't hang on. If they're exposed to the water, it's wood. It's going to have trouble. But if you just would have told us to put a fence around it, half of the danger that you're talking about of all of this would have been alleviated because kids or whoever you're worried about would not go in. We're worried about who's down slope too. But I'm more worried about that blank land that was Deaton, and now if we take down Blackwell, you're going to have empty slope with nothing to support it. But I can tell you those pilings aren't coming out. They are dug down. The cars in those pictures that I gave you in your packet, every single one of these cabins, almost every single one, had a carport. The average car in 1927 weighed 2,400 pounds. 
These cabins were built to hold, but age and water gets to them. We're just trying to hang on to the few that are left. And the gentleman, the bar line barger, with his daughter that has the wonderful exhibit there, that is on the National Register also. It was saved. And it actually was on the other side of the creek and moved when the line bargers bought it. So there's a whole lot of history my mom was trying to tell you. And we just had the wrong planner and maybe the wrong first city council member being so overwhelmed trying to deal with an annexed property that shouldn't have been annexed from the very beginning. If we'd been in the county, we would have had more time. And I'm sorry, I'm being completely transparent and honest with you, because that's what I've had to do with people since my mom died. As a widow, people wouldn't listen to her. And my brother, who's the executor, will tell you, I've gotten so far with some people, but they won't talk to me because I'm not the executor of mom's will. So we're just trying to be completely straightforward and honest with you. If you let us put a fence around it, maybe it would be safe from the dangers that you're worried about. But we just need some time. I have the official letter from Little Rock and the preservation of the tax credits we can go to. I've contacted the contractor. This will be for Paisley when we get to Paisley. But that's all you had to do when mom called you and tried to talk to you when the properties were annexed. The man's been there all these years. He worked with them to get all these properties on the National Register. These are properties you could get people into Bella Vista and renovate with these tax credits. KNWA has done news stories about the similar houses that are on the National Register in Bentonville. They were on the news the other night. Just take advantage of this tax credit and what my mom was trying to tell you from the very beginning and let us reuse Blackwell if that's what Rick wants for the purpose of saving the few cabins that are left. I went over my three minutes, thank you. No, no, there's no time on it. Miss McKinney, before you leave, is it yep. okay if I mm -hmm. ask a question? Thank you for being here. When did your mother pass? April 26. April of last year. Of 2018. This is only my sixth time out in okay. front of people other right. than work. Right. I'm, so, I'm sorry for your loss and I'm, I'm sorry for the grief that, that you're feeling. And I, I understand loss of a parent and I'm sorry. I mean, all of you have. I was the caregiver and I applaud my brother's help. They've lost a parent, too. But, but I do have a simple question. Why has the property that you guys care so much about, why has it been completely neglected? It has not been completely neglected. We gave up at one point because $6,300. When, when did you give up? I have the list of when I paid all the bills, and my brother is still paying Ms. Gore. Right. The third brother I, is I, still paying him. I only know what I see when I drive by the property, right. and what I see is something that has been neglected we, for more than a little while. We were going to put up the banner, and I priced it in almost $200 to show you what Paisley and Blackwell would look like. I'm just letting you know, Blackwell will be dismantled if that's okay. what you allow us to do. If that's what Rick wants, and my brother wrote you the letter with Mr. Wayne, <laughs> put it in your packet or sent it out to you. Well, what the city would like more than anything is for the owners of the property to take care of the property. That's what we, we don't want to be in this business. I'm only one person, and I was not available to my brothers. I have a knee injury. I had surgery in 2017 on something else. They would not let me get out and work. My doctors wouldn't. We talked to the people this last summer about helping us, but it's just difficult, no offense, but when you've worked with a gentleman, as I had the experience with the previous planner and I don't know what he wanted out of all those permits and when you go and try to do the work and you're continuously knocked down we don't know what you want well I think there was only one permit there was a building permit issue no wasn't? 
No, I paid $6,300 to Mr. Gore. No, yes, but right. for every single change you requested, I got built. How much okay. is a home building permit? It depends on the size of the structure. And, and what was the cost of the permit? Uh, do you have it in the file? And when was, was it issued? More than one. The, there was a permit issued in February of 20, May of 2016 that expired in May of 2017. Due to no work being done, there was another permit issued in February of 2017 that expired 2018, and then there was another permit issued in 2018 that expired this past February. So there have so been three. I I can't speak the three on building the time permits frame. issued. I can speak to the time frame. That's Rick. I'm sorry. How much did the permit cost from the city? I'd have to pull it up. Three dollars for two of them. Okay. Well, that's not sixty-three hundred. I'm just commenting on Blackwell. And I, can I hope I answered your question, Mr. Bork. I'm sorry. If you are the mom, did not want people to take care of her. She wanted family, and we can only spread ourselves so thin. And I thought Tom had told you, my older brother who's the executor who's not here, that mom had died. And I thought, I hoped there would have been some kind of time for us to gather ourselves. I'm still getting requests for people, for me to pay them. I personally have paid $17,000 of the estate bills. I don't know about my brothers. And I'm just saying, people come to you and they want their money. The property is what it is. And from what my understanding of the previous planner, nothing was satisfying what could be done. Or we didn't have the right people, and we didn't have the letter from Little Rock for Blackwell. But I'll tell you what, it's still on the National Register, and so is Deaton. So I have to go and take them off the National Register. Guess what? We have to do that work. And the additional information that I gave you from the conservation plan for Arkansas, the number one item is abandonment or family loss of the property. We're trying not to do that because it can still be on the National Register. Blackwell can. Paisley is. But even if we disassemble Blackwell, I still have to take it off the National Register. We have to do that paperwork. So you never took advantage of the tax credits of any of your properties. Yes, sir. I, I'm not clear what you're asking for. It sounds to me like you're okay with us uh, voting against 9386. I want you to not demolish it. We would like time to disassemble it. How much time do you need? Do you know? I believe my brother, the executor, put something in his letter. And Rick is my brother that needs to talk on it, not me. And like I said, I paid the bills for every single design change that was requested. And if you want me to bring them all in, I can. No, no, that's fine. Because we did get not a packet, but we got emails every single time. So, Richard, how much time do you need? Well, less than that. I'm sorry? <laughs> less than no, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, to dismantle. Dismantle. You know, that depends on the weather. I, I have to talk to my older brother about it and, and see what kind of time frame we can get. And it's not something that's going to happen in two weeks. It will probably be a couple of months to salvage material. Can you come up to the mic, yeah. please? You need to give your name, please, too, for the minutes. It would uh, not be in two weeks <clears throat> because I have a full-time job. This is something that we would uh, have to try again to do financially. And what has been put upon us financially by the city is something I'd like to talk about in just a minute. I appreciate your condolences. These, and to answer your question, why those fell into disrepair, the families moved to a different part of, um, of Old Bella Vista, as we call it. And when we put table saws, tools, materials in those cabins and locked them, people broke in and stole them. And after you lose ten or fifteen thousand dollars materials because Benton County didn't care about that area of the county and only respond to the burglaries and not patrol. So we had no police security. I'm glad you guys have a police force because that can help. It helps deter the burglary and the vandalism. I've taken ice chests full of defecation when people would have parties there and leave that kind of stuff and just dis dispose of. It was just ludicrous. But to answer your question, 
you give up after a while. When you lose $15,000 worth of tools that you can't replace, Yes, sir. you just kind of walk away. Yes, sir. When, when, did, when did you all walk away? That had been through the late 70s and the, and the 80s. We tried to maintain them, the roofs on them to keep them from leaking uh, mm -hmm. through the 1990s and into 2000. And mm -hmm. there's just so much money to go around to certain properties. Sure, okay? understood. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Kelly, this property is the Blackwell Paisley that has the four siblings, 9386. That's right. Uh, right. So it's not the Paisley cabin, as you infer. You're right. Yeah. I know, I know exactly okay. And you don't have to hire an attorney to, to try and find out who owns these structures. You can go look at a warranty deed in Benton County and save yourself some money, okay? Actually, we did, but that's, for, uh, that's our consideration, okay. not yours. Well, I'm a taxpayer, and the use of the city funds is my business because it's my tax money, and too. Was, and it was required, I can assure you. All that. right. So, Mr. Soonis, who was undereducated, ill-qualified, and had no experience in inspections that you hired to do these inspections as a lead inspector, came up to us and met Mr. Kelly and Mayor Christie there. And uh, we did have a cell phone connection with my sister, she's forgotten that, in the initial meeting up there. Mm -hmm. You adopted a building ordinance from a standard building ordinance that many cities adopt. It is a lot of good in it. Part of it is interpretation. And under interpretation, Mr. Sunderson took the clause that talked about getting a qualified professional to draft and or work on the property for repair, remodeling, and or reconstruction. That can mean a licensed contractor. It can mean the licensed architect. This Blackwell Paisley cabin initially is a one-story, 800-square-foot structure. He required us, Mr. Sunison, to go get a structural engineer to look at that structure. It was ludicrous. It was a waste of money. A structural engineer costs three times more than an architect. I can personally, and my siblings can tell you that because they paid more for that part. I paid for the storage pod that we were allowed to put up there and a lot of the materials along with Mother. And we tried to divide those expenses. So when you she went to eight different structural engineers, six or seven of them laughed at her. I don't mean that in a poor sense, that we don't do those little type of structures. That's what these guys were laughing at, okay? We finally found Mr. Gore that had done log cabins and historical structures before, and particularly in this area. His dad helped lay out a lot of this area back in the day. So we got into that expense. He took seven months to come up with foundation drawings that first Mr. Simmons said we could have the first permit on, right? We couldn't work on our own property in the city because we didn't have a permit, because we're waiting on a structural engineer that took seven months to get those initial drafts up. And we brought those into your office up there and looked at them with Mr. Gore. We did. That's right. We then were required to get Mr. Hmm. Gore to do framing plans. The Blackwell Paisley needed it. It was in grave disrepair. The Paisley cabin, as bad as it looks right now, is in a hell of a lot better shape than it was back five years ago. Sorry, it was then than now, okay? So that time frame and the requirement to take a standing enclosed structure and do framing plans on it, I've never heard of that. The architects and, and, and engineers and contractors that I insure, I went to many of these people, professionals. And I said, how many times in your history of 50 years of doing this have you been asked to draft up plans of framing on a standing enclosed structure? The answer was no from all of them. It was some kind of extraordinary obsession that Mr. Sunison had that we needed to do this. That was a waste of about $4,000 and another six months right there. You wonder why the permits took so long and kept getting continued? That's why. The city made over and above normal and reasonable demands upon our family to get a structural engineer and the expense of that person and the time delay he took to get to that work and bring it back to the city. And in the final permit, Tom and I brought mom up here and sat down just across the hall here when Mr. Simonson went through an old book and looked at it, said we need another extension to now finally try and get the work done because we get all the structural engineering stuff done. Well, that permit application got lost. He left, and it never appeared after Tom turned it in. So I don't know what happened to it, but it was filed here. And that's why you have multiple permits, a foundation permit to work on both cabins separately, 
then later to frame it. But we're talking about months and tens of thousands of dollars that we were put through because you had a guy that had never inspected a building, had never inspected a historical cabin, and he never set foot on that property to inspect it off of the road. When we got the foundation work, we called him. We said, we got it done. Come talk to us and meet us. He Mr. said, send Mr. me a picture. Mr. McKinney, let's, will you tell us what you would like from us and what you intend to do to fix that property? That's, that's what we need to focus on tonight. Okay. I think you need to know some of the history of why I, this I, got to where you, it is right now. And you shared okay? it with me. And it's I, not that we just let these things yes, land sir. to the ground like some of you may think. That was not Mr. our desire either. Mr. McKinney. Yes, sir. Uh, in all due respect to what you've just said about architects and structural engineers, I would differ with that opinion. Architectural firms have either structural engineers on their staff or they hire a structural engineer to do their structural designs. So to clarify Mr. Sonnison's request, architects are not structural engineers. They do not do structural design. That's correct, and these cabins didn't need them. Well, that's what Mr. Gore told all of us after his assessment of it, and, sir. And, and, and that I'm not here to argue with you about. I'm only trying to clarify the difference between an architect and an engineer. I, I, believe me, I know the difference. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go back to Steve's what comment. What we want. Yeah. Okay, I think that what we're asking for, and this is going to sound ludicrous, a little bit of time. Okay, I know these things are in bad condition. The uh, Blackwell Paisley could be salvaged. Uh, by the good parts can be taken, the other parts can be hauled off. That one we're just going to have to write off. The Paisley cabin we'd still like to have a shot at. We, uh, you know, it, it, the, the banks talked about getting these structures to a point to where they were worth borrowing money on, okay? So we were trying to get them there. But we had these obstacles and time and money spent elsewhere to keep us from getting to that point. So on 9386, did I get the address right, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yes, sir. Okay, on the Blackwell Paisley, we're willing to dismantle that one in a reasonable amount of time if weather permits that. We would like to try and put that material into the Paisley cabin if that's a feasible thought for y'all. If not, that's up to your decision, okay? Uh, we've tried to work with the city, and I can tell you it's not been easy. I know y'all are great people. But the process has not been an easy process. It's been very expensive to what we should have been required, to what we were required. An architect could have come in. Jim Key, I talked to him, one of my clients in, in Fayetteville. Mel Milholland, an engineer. The survey is a whole other issue. You know, you brought in this survey that was five degrees off after all the surveys has been done on that property. And Mr. Milholland disagreed with that. So we would like to try and salvage the Paisley cabin if at all possible. The Mr. Blackwell McKinney. Paisley. So again, yo, very sorry for the loss. You know, ma'am, um, and I'll assure you, I mean, I, there isn't any anyone uh, that's that's like a, a more staunch supporter of historical preservation. You know, we we my wife and I travel around the country and we see historical structures and it, we love it. We absolutely love it. Um, but a couple things. So I was just up there again today. You know what? I'm not an engineer. I'm not an architect. I'm not qualified in any, sh you know, way, shape, form, and that Personal manner to make it. Personal opinion, I get it. I don't. I do not see how either one of those structures can be modified or or made uh, structurally. I just don't. I don't see how it can happen. I really don't. I sincerely don't. Just standing there looking at them. I got out of my truck. I walked right up to the edge of them and I looked at them, and, and they're literally they're rotting, and and like one of one of the cabins has two posts sitting right on top of each other and it has a bar. With, I with guarantee bolts. you that those are probably rotted. I would guess they're that's probably a, not not safe at all. Mm -hmm. I just don't I, I don't I don't believe that those 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 cabins can be saved. Maybe you can go in and salvage some pieces out of it. I understand maybe that you want to do that. But, but secondary, I mean, I don't even really know where to go with this right now um, to allow you more time because we can't let it go on forever. I understand. And again, two and a half years, and I know I hear all these things that, suppose like that have taken place, but I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't been at the table at, at any of those conversations. What kind of time are you talking about to come back to the city with a plan 
for what it is that you want to do and implement it in in a manner where it can be done in a reasonable amount of time. Because we have to know that. I can't just well, I we can't just let this go on. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Now let me just answer one question for you. Do you know what the skeletal structures of those cabins are built of? Okay, rough cut. All I know is I just cut, see things oak, falling rough. through everywhere, ceilings, floors. At this point, yes, sir, I agree it's, with it's, that. It's rotted. I mean, it's just Okay, gone. so the skeletal structure was rough cut white oak from the 1920s. It's petrified. You cannot drive a, you know what a maze nail is? A concrete no, nail? You cannot drive a concrete nail into that with a three-pound carpenter hammer. It's too damn hard. You can take an air hammer. It's what we use. We used to pre-drill them back before they had the air hammers. Okay, so... I would say if you can give us a couple of weeks to get back with you in conference, because number one, Tom's on vacation. The third brother, John, is coming in from overseas where he does missionary work later this month to conference with them and see if we have the stamina, number one, Mayor Christie, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to do this because of what the city has put us through, honestly, and the finances, okay? That's the key point has been finances all along because We've had to put the money into it while we're trying to maintain other homes and properties, and it's been eaten up by the structural engineer. Well, sir, and, well. and so when Sunison, you know, because I, I, I did, I, I, he's the one that dialed me into it, right? We took a write up, pardon me, just for a second, okay? And we wrote up, we took a look at him. I don't know what the period of time was before that, so I'm talking two and a half years ago. So I don't know when when the issue first arose and to come before the city council to, pop, to possibly condemn these structures and tear them down. But but before the city became involved at all, they had to be almost to the condition they're in right now. Not really, you know. Mm -hmm. but when, yeah, go ahead. They had to be. There were. I mean, there were photos so then. People kept breaking into them. We took down the walk. I mean, we literally took up the floors, took down the walk. To the big cabin. So she's that talking. no one could get in and walk around it and take things again. I'm sorry that you think that is dilapidated and that you don't like no. how it looks. But I was in there. I was the one that crawled up and pulled things out and handed them out to my brothers. We had, it's like, if you look at, you can't see it in the picture. This is like a drawbridge. And this was the Excuse carport. me. When, when did you do this uh, climbing a year, up? Two years ago. We took the walkway down about four years ago. And then we mm. took up the floors. The boys did more in Blackwell. I did more in Paisley because I can crawl a little. I can crawl up in there. This is before I had my knee trouble. But I'm the, I'm the one that went in and pulled out what it could. We've had so many things stolen. Anyway, I'll <coughs> go into that. Okay. Okay, but I wanted you to understand, Mr. Fowler, I'm sorry that that means dilapidated to you. That means people aren't going in it to me. Ma'am, I, sorry, I, I we, we could say, I don't know about the walkway. I'm talking about the structures. The structures I think, I think where we are right now is, is so. the council. We need to like have a conversation on the resolution and see if we are willing to allow 30 days for you to bring the plan back. Because, and I don't know if we can do that until we actually decide we're going to. You okay, can, you one can. last comment, please. Mr. Gore, uh, at the time, he was hired and inspected these structures, deemed the, the, the skeletal structure of them safe for us to go and work on them. I'm talking about the joist, the floor beams, the two beams you're talking about that don't like to look like they're going to hold together. You'd be surprised what those things have been through. Mr. One part of that Paisley cabin had six layers of shingles on it. That's just what they did in the day. Under the, uh, five of, of asphalt on top of the shake. Now, we removed a lot of that and put rolled roofing down just to patch it for the time being, right? Mr. Back when Mr. we McKinney, were doing this. Okay. Did you get anything from Mr. Gore in writing that explained what was uh, structurally sound in any of those buildings? We met with uh, Mayor Christie and Mr. Kelly and had the conversation, what and he provided those letters to my brother and my sister. What was Mr. Gore in that meeting? Yes. 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 He presented a plan. Yes. He had the the, the he foundation brought plans, plans on, on how to fix it. it. All right. Stop. And that was probably two years ago now. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
But Do you plan on restoring them to the point where you can use them for vacation cabins again? That was the idea, yes, sir. We, okay. we have a letter in support of the Paisley cabin, but with the official tax credit offer now. Yeah, well, that's, I'm just worried about how... So, Mr. Wozniak, the, the goal bring. now would be to abandon and salvage the Blackwell Paisley right, and small. use the pieces for that to restore the... Of what we could and, and right. get that one back to how it looked yeah. in this picture. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Linda, did you have a question? No, I just, we keep going back and forth from one property to the if other. This is only We're about 1986. <laughs> well, it's hard for oh, us to talk sorry. about one without I, the I other. I understand, but we need yeah. to take okay. them one at a time. So, any other questions before right. I step back and let you all talk? I have a question for uh, Jason. Uh, my understanding was w if we go ahead and condemn a property that the owner has so many days to go in there and in fact they're supposed to actually exactly that they the if take you adopt it out it, themselves if you adopt how much this time do they have it's 30 days so okay. if you adopt this resolution they would have 30 days to raise and remove it and it and if and if they didn't do that then the city would be able to go in at that point and do it and then uh, assess uh, a lien basically against the property to collect through property taxes for the expense of that so they, the, the owner is, is really ordered to do it within 30 days. Now, just to answer the other question that kind of came up, you need to finish your public hearing on this property this evening. And then once you close that public hearing, if you desire to table your proposed resolution till next month, and, it, and say, for example, you adopted it next month, then they would have 30 days after that in which to do it. Uh, one thing I want to bring to the council's attention uh, is... It is possible, and I, I, I don't know if Mr. McKinney remembers this, and, I, and forgive me, I don't remember if I was talking to you, Richard, or your brother, Tom, but uh, some cities uh, actually in this process of quote-unquote working with people, which, which is brought around a lot, uh, would, would suggest a, a contract, and that is that the owner in this particular situation would enter into a contract with the city, then in fact they might post a bond to cover the cost of destroying the property, which would cover that if they did not follow through and would set a, a timetable and a schedule of things that they could do deliver that over a period of time to renovate the property. And if they did not do that, uh, pursuant to the terms of that agreement, uh, they would waive further notice, another hearing, this whole process, and then contractually the city could go in, use that bond, destroy the, take, take the property out, and then be reimbursed for the money. Doesn't, you know, the taxpayers would have to pay to do this as it is now, then it's a whole collection process on the back end, so that way it sort of gives the city the security that there is, in fact, money there. The taxpayers won't bear that, and it allows this working together process. I am not the expert on this. Your expert that you need to talk to about this is sitting right there in terms of the building aspect of this, but you have to reach a point where you're able to comply with the codes in order to do anything, mm -hmm. and I think... I think that part of the structural engineer thing was get this to a position where it won't fall in on somebody and then you can go to step two. But I'd have to let the, the people involved in that discussion. And just so you know, Doug is a builder. He has building experience. Mary? Um, as I spoke to Mr. Doug quickly, we, and I forget, forgive me, I had a concussion. I'll take care of all. So sometimes would, you, would you please use the microphone? Thank you. I had spoken with Mr. Doug. Um, once before and I apologize because I had a concussion while taking care of mom and I um, asked him if we could if we decide to dismantle Blackwell the pilings as Rick mentioned are so thick and deeply dug would you consider again leaving the pilings until we can get a plan for Paisley because those pilings are dug so deeply to hold a 23 pound car be clear with them in my mind that means you've got 60 days instead of 30 to get that down and get, get if you want some part uh, if you want the wood or whatever because I think it's we're going to end up uh, doing it in 30 days uh, is there any kind of permit they're going to be you could even issue to them with the property in this position right here uh, we can give them a demo permit well, but they would have to comply. They would need permit to demolish, but they're going to have to comply with the timetable and the resolution. Even so, they would have to get it done before their permit would expire. In other words, the council would need to do that. So, and, and you may, may um, consider doing that. Uh, 
consider city's liability on people entering those structures now that the city's aware of? Well, there's, there's not. I mean, we have sovereign immunity, but it is a concern, uh, you know, if the city just you know, doesn't care what happens. And, I, and I'm not concerned at all. The city obviously cares what happens. So I think if it was just a we don't care attitude, then I'd be concerned about some kind of constitutional issue or something. But uh, it's, I'm not concerned with that at this point. But are you saying to them that this is a very dangerous situation? For their safety. Okay. Go in there and you're hammering, you're crying, you're exerting forces on floors and boards that could cause something to fail if you fall through. Okay. One of the one of the issues might be is you know we can only grant a permit if they meet the requirements. If the code is if it's to do something the code would permit. And if we, if our rule if the if the building code or whatever it is we're looking at just doesn't allow them to do what it is they want to do, then in 30 days they're coming back, they might come back and say, you're not allowing us to do what we want to do. And that's why we can't do it. And then we're back here again. So well, I just want you to be aware. I think he's also saying, would the city have any liability for the actual owners themselves being on the property and dismantling the building, you know, if, if, a, full, if a full would fall through? Yeah, not, I don't really think so. Okay, so let me be clear what the motion is. It's to table until the June 24th. And then at that meeting, we will see a proposal on this, on this cap. Okay. Uh, Mayor, this, this mayor the, the, uh, we'll be coming back to open hearing. Uh, it, well, there'll be an open hearing on the next property. Next property. This property is, is public hearing on this is concluded. Yeah, the motion is to table for the 30 motion days. Is to, 30 days. The motion is to table the resolution to condemn it for 30 days. And then whatever all of you are, are telling these folks you'd like to see that might make you hesitate on that in 30 days, they need to know that. But in 30 days, you're going to have this again, and you may you know, vote on it again. There's nothing they're going to provide you to keep it from being tight. I think it's pretty clear there's 30 days, and we need to see it. Well, again. let's be clear, it's not 30 days. Well, the next regular meeting. It's the next regular meeting. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Regular meeting. Yeah. Regular meeting. Yeah. Attorney Kelly, I, I would like to see them in their timeline table include the complete demolition of the building. Now, they have talked about salvaging material so we need a time for salvaging that you think is adequate and then a timeline to finish taking it out well if you're if you're wanting to order it to be raised and removed then you need to take action on this resolution there's no way to table it and then order them to take it down no i'm saying we're looking for a timeline for what they need to do there. that's what you're going to consider next but, time. but part of that would be what their <coughs> ultimate cutoff is because eventually you're going to have to demolish what's so left. That if if you table to the next regular meeting, and and that would be the June meeting, and then you adopt this resolution at that meeting, then they're going to have 30 days from then to have it raised and removed. Okay. That's in that's in the terms of the resolution itself. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to point out that I do have extensive experience in historic preservation, and I've renovated a whole bunch of structures a lot older than these two. And also been told I was crazy to do what I was doing. Even I would attempt to fix this. Thirty-six. Did you understand? Like, Unfortunately. Okay. Is there any further comment? Okay. okay, then we'll move. I, I, I do. I, I do have one last thing. So we're gonna table. That's fine. But just vote. You know, we have to vote to do that. No, I know we got to vote to do it. But I got a question before we do it. So to say the owners. They go and they take out what they want to take out, but then they just leave the structure like it is, and then it can still be left at the in the long run and coming upon the city if they don't do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They have to pay to yep. demolish it. Exactly. That's right. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, hold on, hold on. I'm done. Okay. So we're still in conversation. Okay. I'm not ready to vote. I had hoped that the property owners would come tonight with a definitive plan for how they intended to move forward. We spent a lot of time looking backwards, not a lot of time looking forwards. Uh, I, I'm willing to go along with additional time here. The next time we meet, it's got to be action. We can't keep going by what happened in the past. We need to look forward and figure out if these properties can be salvaged. In this case, we're trying to salvage a cabin. And 
there's no action on it. There's, there was no action in the last week. I don't know why you guys didn't see this coming. You had notification of this for some period of time, and you're not out there. And, and I, I'm not looking for any, any any more explanation. I just wanted to explain to you. I wished you to come in here tonight with a definitive plan that we could have all said that's what we wanted to see, and we didn't get that. So you're going to get an extension because the city doesn't want to knock down anything. That's not what we want to do. It'll probably cost you more if we do it than if you guys do it. But you've got to take action on this now. Okay. I, okay. I so can't have, say anything. Yeah, no, just hold on. Okay, is there anybody else who wants to say something? All right, then we'll go for a while. This is a motion to take. Okay. So the next right will be. Councilmember Lloyd. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Burke. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now the next resolution is ordering the raising and removal of dilapidated and unsafe structure owned by Julia and McKinney at 9390 Suits Arts Drive in the city of Dollar Vista. And we'll go into open here uh, to public hearing and Doug would you kick it off again. Mayor. Council. Ninety-three ninety success drive is uh, <clears throat> vacant structure that's been empty for several years, and it has blocked it to the point that it's unsafe, and it is open and unsecured to the public. At this time, city staff recommends raising the removal of the property. Okay, thank you. Now, is there anybody here this evening that would like to talk to us? Is this your chance, Michael? Ninety-three minutes. Thank you. I'm Mary Jane McKinney, I'm the daughter of Mary McKinney, granddaughter of the Paisleys. It is still in the National Register and the condition that it's in. I don't see. No, this is the correct one. No, this is Paisley. I talked to Mr. Um, Wilcox Ralph at the Preservation Association. He wrote me the letter. If we take advantage of the tax credit this time, because we didn't have all the information my mom had before. And there's the contractor that I contacted in Little Rock to actually put the plan together for us. Um, I just wanted to make sure I can go on the property this weekend and clean up because they have been minus me for almost a year, not helping. And I've been trying to get back to work. Now my weekends are all up here unless I have to travel. So I just want to make sure I have permission to go on both of the properties. Is there a, 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 I don't know. You've been restricted by the city on that. No, it's your property. It's your okay. okay, and if you would look at Deaton, we completely cleaned up the middle property, which was Deaton. We, we were, we're talking about 9390, okay? We're I understand, really limited to but that. you had a question about how the properties will look. So I was just trying to answer. So it is still in the National Register in the condition that it's in. I would like to possibly approach and put a plan together and I would come back to you with something. I, I don't really know what more I can say because I felt like I've spoken out of turn um, on the others, but this property has been on the Vista and Bitville Chamber of Commerce tour. Uh, for marketing and tourism from the time it was put on the National Register. So, Bella Vista has had advantage of it. It's also pictured in the Bella Vista Museum. And whoever mentioned someone taking a picture of the property from the street earlier, it was put in there by someone taking a property picture from the street. So, um, it's been on exhibit without mom's permission for a long time and velvet so we're fine with it now but um that's the picture i have in the packet actually and this one would not go into your packet i apologize so it's still in the national register it's still listed and um my brother is the executor and you're asking why um we may didn't have a plan for the others because he's well, the executor. You, you, your mother you own this one. Your deceased mother does not own this one. We're in the estate. It's in the estate, Mr. Keller. Okay. The Paisley cabin was Julia. Okay. Julia, all right. Go ahead. Sorry. So I wasn't, um, anyway, 
there was a debate on whether I could talk to anyone, so my brother gave me permission to talk to you. And um, that's what's been happening a lot to me lately with the estate items. And it's just, as a woman, it's just rather frustrating. But I will work with my brothers and as part of the estate and put a plan together. And I will um, work with them on any other plan that you would like. Okay, fair enough. Rick? Yes. I'll be brief, I promise. Um, the Paisley cabin used to be the sugar cabin back in the day. That's who built it. And this goes back to our great aunts, grandmother, great grandmother, and our grandmother and father who Julianne spent 84 of her, her 89 summers at Bella Vista beginning in 1920. And I'm sorry, we're past I shouldn't apologize for that, but I feel like I yelled at you a little bit and that wasn't the purpose. I just get passionate, and, and, and my mother always told me I'm a frank speaker, so I, I don't beat around the bush. Uh, we had a plan, uh, Mr. Bork, and it was didn't include a structural engineer at the time, but it became that, okay? The problem was, before perhaps you were in the permitting position, uh, permits were kind of hard to come by. You know, we would apply, and we'd go talk, finally be issued, and we would do work, as far as we were allowed to work, and then when we got, I said, the structural engineer, the ladies came in from his part of it. So that kind of blew our plan. And that's why coming in tonight, we're just trying to, to regroup and come up with something to salvage one cap. And I appreciate y'all listening to us and taking the time. Uh, I apologize for y'all for us being so long. Thanks, Rick. Is there anybody else who would like to comment? So at this point, then, I will close the public hearing. Counselors? Discussion? Yeah. I had a question for Linda Lloyd. When, when you were commenting that you didn't think any of these were salvageable, uh, meaning could be restored reasonably, were you referring to 9390 also? Yes, now I've not been in the structures. So I yeah. will clarify that part. Yeah. I, I stopped by the uh, all three of them tonight and looked at them. Uh, they are in a state of disrepair. Uh, Condition-wise, uh, my view would be that they are going to be costly to rehabilitate to a usable state. Um, the applicants have expressed concerns about the cost to date for things. Uh, in looking at the structures for city permits in the past, my uh, subjective thought would be it's going to be probably five or ten times that amount to bring them even close to a habitable condition uh, in looking at their state of disrepair today. Doug, is there, is there even, even a possibility of having any kind of sewer up there now? It would, be, it would be difficult to get a, to get a uh, <coughs> in there, set the box. I mean, it's straight downhill behind those two cabins. The six-inch water line that was referred to, what is I think that? it's a culvert, Doug. It's okay. a culvert. It's, it's a drain pipe. Well, is it, may I speak? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. It was a drain pipe put down the street pipe. above, straight down a gradient next to the black well, so not next to the street. Right. So it's a culvert. And, and I think it might be a couple of years ago. Because of this. But, um, okay, is there any other comment? I, I would just add, I, I wish that the ownership group, uh, you, you have demonstrated a lot of uncertainty about whether you're all on the same page and whether you're all committed to the same objective here. And if that's not resolved by the next time, would you leave us no choice. So since we have tabled the other one, it would make sense to table this one as well until the June 24th meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Because one depends on the other. Yeah. Any further comment? Okay. We'll go for the vote. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor, favor of tabling until the June meeting? Uh, Councilmember Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Carried six to 
Okay, the last resolution of the evening is expressing the willingness of the City of Bella Vista to utilize Federal Aid Transportation Alternatives Program Fund to assist with the construction of the Mercy Way Corridor improvement. So what you're being asked is that staff has the permission to be able to apply for this through regional planning. Um, I can give you an update. There was a meeting today with Burns McDonald. Uh, they're going to work up some what-if scenarios for us, um, and then we will bring them to you. The pricing has changed because over time prices have gone up, so we've asked them to include that as well. Um, we have approached the Walton Family Foundation. We've had one initial meeting with them, uh, and they asked us to do exactly what we're asking you to give us permission to do, which is to see if we can get some more of the TAP money. Um, and then we also wanted to talk to them this week about timelines and, and would they be willing to participate, um, particularly in funding just the bike path alone on this, on this uh, piece of construction. Unfortunately, the, uh, the point person for all these all these grants is out of the country until June the 3rd. So we will do due diligence so that in our capital um, expense session on June the 10th, we're going to bring everything to the table so that you'll have an opportunity to see everything uh, laid out. And uh, it's going to be in a format that Carrie's going to put together. And we'll have the TV in here, and, and, she'll, and she'll hitch up her laptop. So we can do the what if scenarios and we can change the numbers and see what it looks like. So that's the plan. That's just about sums it up that burns it down. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes. I thought we were looking at an early June deadline for application. When is June the third? Right. That's okay, so we're going to give them permission right. before yeah. we look at the what ifs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we don't okay. have to accept it, we just got to apply for it. That's right. I understand. There's, there's no guarantee you're going to get it. Correct. But if you don't apply, you can't have a chance. Correct. Anything else? Okay. Right. Would we have any motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sorry. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Councilmember Flynn. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Boy. Yes. Burke. Yes. Holler. Yes. Carry it, Secretary. Okay, meetings and announcements. The next City uh, Council work session will be Monday, June 17th at 5.30 here in the Court Building. The next regular meeting of City Council will be Monday, June 24th at 6.30 here in the Court. The Planning Commission work session will be Thursday, May 30th at 4.30 in the afternoon, again in the Court Building. The Planning Commission regular meeting will be June the 10th at 6.30 p.m. here in, excuse me, this one uh, will be in the Bella Vista City Hall conference room. Uh, and the Board of Zoning Adjustment, if required, will be June the 18th, 5.30 p.m. here in the court. And the Board of Construction Appeals, if required, will be July the 9th, again here in the court building. Thank you for joining us. I wish you a safe and happy Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for attending today.